Now coming to the final presentation, and it's an it's again it's a pleasure, it's an honor to have someone here with us um, with a tremendous background in software in, in, in software and engineering. Um, we're talking about uh, keeping track of BGP configuration within the peering manager. The peering manager is is a well known tool. It's well distributed within our uh, um, peering industry, and um, and we will then see how um, how Guillaume is putting this into the uh, peering manager, working with the peering manager, implementing this to keep track of the BGP sessions. It's always a pain point, obviously, and I guess Guillaume will show us how to have the pain relievers. All right. There he is. Hello, thank Guillaume. you. Hello. Welcome. Thanks you a lot for having me. One. You have the honor to, to be um, the big ending, and, um, and I hopefully you, you enjoy your time, take your time. Uh, we're not under pressure and um, take all the needs and thank you for being here with us and handing over to you now. So I have the pleasure of putting you all to sleep today. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is Peering Manager, which is an open source project uh, which started uh, about uh, several years ago. And uh, it's basically a source of truth uh, uh, to configure your BGP uh, routers and uh, knowing uh, what states uh, should your BGP in, be in. Uh, you can document pretty much everything about your BGP, the EIS and your peer with, the internet exchanges, uh, the routing policies. Uh, and as well as your configuration, because the tool can actually uh, generate the configuration for you as well. And it was designed for to be uh, as user friendly as possible to be used uh, uh, using uh, mainly a user interface. And uh, it's not something to replace a uh, lot of tools. It's highly specialized and it does one thing, but it tries to do it well, at least. Uh, talking about some technical points, uh, you you have the, the following uh, details here, which it, it, it brings a, 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 some database, uh, which is PostgreSQL for, for technical reason. It brings a, a, a cache as well, uh, based on Redis for, for speed improvement. And it, it can interact, uh, you can can interact with it uh, with uh, an API and uh, as well with uh, a user interface. And it can interact interact with uh, peering DB and your routers. Basically, it can connect to your routers, retrieve some data about your BGP, about your BGP session, and it can push data, uh, push configuration to your router to actually configure it. And uh, for the peering DB part, it can bring some data from peering DB to uh, automatically provision some some details inside peering manager without having to type everything and click uh, a lot of button to do it. Uh, basically, an overview of what's under the hood. Uh, it's 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 written with Python 3.6 minimum. Uh, and we'll probably uh, rule out 3.6 soon to, to make it 3.7. As I said, there is a, a, a dependency with PostgreSQL and Redis, and you have some Docker images and stacks available if, you, if you're a Kubernetes kind of guy. And uh, the REST API is, is a first-class citizen here. The idea is that you can integrate a peering manager within your workflow if you already have automation in place, not uh, not having it to do something in another way. It works with the Napalm library to interact with your router, which make it, um, make it ven vendor agnostic. It can talk to Juniper devices, to Cisco devices, to Arista devices, and more, if you, if you are using a com community uh, Napalm driver as well. And uh, in it integrates uh, also with uh, Netbox, if you if you use Netbox, which is a great tool, one well, one of the tools that inspired actually Pring Manager, and with DB for for fetching data, it's uh, available in GitHub 
of course, and it's under uh, an open source license. So you can grab it, uh, modify it to your needs, and uh, do whatever you want with it. Uh, current set of features are uh, tracking your uh, the AS details, your AS as well as the others. Uh, you can track uh, the IXP you're connected to with the, with connections, and uh, you can also uh, track peering session you set up of the IXPs. Uh, you can create a random group of BGP uh, of, B, of BGP session to 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 group other kind of session like transit provider sessions, uh, PNIs, uh, all those sessions that don't uh, belong on a, on an IXP. You can track communities and routing policies. This is declarative only. It means that uh, you can track the names and how you assign these policies and communities to to peering session, to uh, autonomous systems, to groups, etc. But it does not generate yet the configuration for a routing policy, for, in for, for instance. However, it can generate uh, configurations for your router. Uh, it's based on the on Jinja2 templating, uh, which is the same templating engine as uh, Ansible, for instance. This was made on purpose because a lot of people use uh, Ansible for their automation. So it was uh, easy to bring uh, Jinj2 as well inside Peering Manager for, for you to, to, to take your hand on the configuration uh, templating system uh, without uh, too much trouble. Uh, a feature which is uh, com coming, which needs to be reworked a bit is the email part because we want uh, with Peering Manager for you to be able to send uh, email, uh, peer, uh, peering requests, uh, maintenance emails as well, and uh, some, some emails like so. And uh, of course, there is an API, as I said, to automate with your with your workflow. The release process is is yeah. I'm not a developer as per se. I'm more of a network engineer. So the release process is uh, it's released when it's ready. So you don't see any correlation in the date, but as you can see, the first table release was uh, in uh, the end of 2019. And uh, 2020, we are about to release two major release uh, a year for now, but I'm trying to speed the release process a bit to bring more bug fixes uh, 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 in a more uh, quickly manner. Uh, 2.0 will be uh, a, a bigger a bigger release because uh, I'm trying to get rid of all the old uh, legacy code, which is blocking the the improvements for now. Uh, for instance, uh, what we want to bring for 2.0 is the ability to connect to have an external uh, connector uh, based on the API of, of Peering Manager for you to create uh, some kind of peering form, peering web form. So you can export it on the internet and uh, people are going to, if people want to peer with you, they can connect on the form, select uh, the, enter the AIS, see the common IXP you, 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 are with, uh, you have with, uh, with him, and then automatically uh, uh, create the peering session for you uh, without you to, to have to, to do anything. That's basically it. Uh, now, uh, Dekix for some months has been a sponsor of Peering Manager, and uh, I am greatly thankful for it because uh, it, it it helps me to to co to commit more time in it because it's it's not my day job to write uh, this software. It's it's yeah all of all on my uh, on my free time. So thanks a lot, Dekix, for that, and uh, Dekix uh, help. Uh, bringing the IX API into the game, basically uh, with, uh, like you, you are, you've seen with, with the previous pre presentation, you can do a lot of things with IX API, ordering uh, connections, uh, modifying MAC addresses and stuff. And we want to bring that into a peering manager. So you don't have to actually uh, code the IX API connector to do those stuff. 
uh, IXP, uh, Peering Manager will do this for you uh, by just exposing in, exposing the features for you. Uh, in 1.4, we we brought a major uh, feature, which was called the multiple connection for the same ISP. Before uh, this feature, you you had to create as much ISP as you had connection uh, to an ISP. It means that if you were connected two times to DKIX, you had to create two times DKIX into Peering Manager. That's no longer the case. And uh, with uh, Peering Manager, uh, we try to in the in the first uh, in the in the first uh, time make you uh, bring you the data from the IX API that uh, IXPs can provide to you so you can see service IDs configured configured MAC addresses and uh, other uh, data and in the second time we we'll try to make you able to change uh, this uh, this kind of data by uh, changing MAC addresses, requesting new services, new connections to the to IXP, for instance. Uh, the current plan for it is that uh, IX API is basically a REST API, so it's pretty straightforward to, to work with, since uh, a lot of software are based on API now. And uh, the, the biggest challenges for, for Peering Manager with IX API is to make the integration clear and link the data between uh, IX API and Peering Manager because these are both sets of data uh, which were um, um, filled uh, uh, for in different uh, contexts. So we need to, to find a way to link this data together. The read-only mode is, is, is is uh, planned for the autumn of 2021 for this year. Uh, I hope because yeah, my uh, my planning. I'm a French guy, so I tend to to be a bit more uh, Latino in some way, like uh, seeing a deadline, like Marcos uh, uh, exposed in his uh, slides. And the read write mode will be. Uh, soon after the read-only mode because it's just a matter of uh, designing some forms and the user interface to 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 do that uh, i'm trying to uh, i'm going to try to show you a demo of uh, of peering manager for you to have a look at it uh, if it if it does want to work um, If I'm sharing a screen, but I'm sharing something else, like so. So this is what it actually looks like, Peering Manager. This is a, you can see a, a bunch of, of data. There is a change log, so you you can see everything that uh, that's happening on the on the instance. And uh, you can see that I've created a bunch of uh, autonomous system of sessions of uh, IP addresses and uh, and so forth. But uh, what I'm wanting, to, uh, what I'm going to show you, is the IX API itself, because uh, this is the the most. Uh, this is what we're here for, basically. So if I'm clicking this, it's going to take a little time. I know that's that's quite uh, fast. So you can see that basically this is a holy stage uh, development preview. So you have the exclusivity of it. And you can see basically that you just enter the URL of the API, uh, the key you're using. Uh, it will detect the version of the API because you can have an API version working. You may work with API version 1 or version 2, version 3 later. So you have a different set of features coming in. I think I then retrieve the contacts. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any IP addresses or MAC addresses in this uh, test instance, but it's going to be the same. It's, uh, listing the, uh, the IP addresses with the FQDN associated, uh, the MAC addresses with the validity and so forth. So it's going to be uh, really uh, integrated inside the user interface for you to, to, to play with it. I'm going back to my slides now. 
and uh, for the Finnish, uh, yeah, it's of course uh, available uh, for 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 the wide audience, so you can all uh, see uh, what Peering Manager is. It's made by network engineer for network engineer in the first place. First place, I'm a network engineer. Uh, I have another maintainer with me helping me, who is a network engineer as well. There is a demo available online if you want to to test it by yourself. And if you want to participate to it, you you can talk about it. You can open issues, pull requests, uh, documenting. Uh, you can sponsor it like uh, Dekix do. And if you have some spare hardware like routers, you don't need anymore. We we are always uh, interesting to to have them to to help us uh, developing the inter the uh, integration with the router as well. So that's uh, that's that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, uh, you 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 may uh, reach me on whatever mail. Uh, I don't have my mail here, but you can reach the the NetDev community. There is a Slack uh, there is a Slack channel here about Peering Manager. You can uh, reach me on uh, GitHub, and of course the demo instance is for you to test. So. That's it. If you have any question, feel free to, to ask me. Hey, Guillaume. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this really comprehensive presentation of what you do and what you're integrating into the peering manager. And I think this is really, 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 really helpful for a lot of the people dealing with uh, BGP configs. Um, I hope so, yeah. Absolutely. I have no doubt. Even I'm not doing this, but I know from, from many talks with peering managers, they're all struggling with this. and. Um, I just have a, just has a side view on my my uh, colleague Wolfgang. He used to be a peering manager, and he's he had thumbs up. So you did the <laughs> right thing, and we are very proud and happy to be your sponsor here. And I'm asking the community, hey, if you have uh, as as Guillaume requested, if you have some uh, some money left, time left, um, spare parts left, hey, please do it because it's for for the good of the internet, for all of us, and it makes the internet better and a much more sustainable place, even what it is at all. Guillaume, I don't have any further questions. Um, so I thank you again very much for your time. Thank you a lot. Um, you didn't brought us to sleep. So mission not accomplished. I'm happy. <laughs> thank you for this. So and uh, thanks again. And we are now coming to the to the end to the clothing.